Welcome to the Mingo and Karen Show, the podcast. We're excited that you've chosen to explore the topic of life with us. All of us are here for a reason, so let's venture on this journey together. Karen and I were discussing the last 24 hours, which has been a true roller coaster. <laughs> it's, it's one of them things you can't do nothing but laugh about it. Yeah. And the point of this particular podcast is about emotions can affect your logic. Mm. So I'm going to let you elaborate on what I'm saying. The worst thing to do is try to make a logical de decision while you're emotional. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. You got to separate the two. Yeah. So when this thing, this big thing that happened. Well, it always seems big. Yeah, it seems big, but it's only as big as you make it. Yeah. When it happened, we said, oh, I've been around this mountain before. Mm -hmm. So Karen began to get ready to talk to me about it. And I said, I got to go upstairs for a minute. I got to go upstairs for a minute. I got in my little private space and I had my whole fit. I had my fit because I had to get it off my chest because mm -hmm. it wasn't just one thing. It's a series of things in 24 hours. And it's like, really? Really? Yeah. So I had to pull back and say, no, you can't do this like this. I had a conversation with our oldest son and I was telling him about something he and I was talking about. And I was like, look, you're not going to be able to make this decision. You, you just can't. You're too emotional. Mm -hmm. Pull them apart. He was like, Dad, I, I really don't know how to pull them apart. I said, pull them apart. Mm -hmm. Go have your fit. Go do whatever it is you need to do. Then once you get that out the way, you can come back and think logically. Mm -hmm. I believe this formula works, and I did it today. So when I came back downstairs and I began to talk with Karen, we could talk about the logic of what needed to be done because I had got as much of the emotion out that I could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, in the past – whenever situations would come up you're talking about just one situation where we would just virtually have a come apart and so in, in the midst of both of us <laughs> it's kind of funny that i think about it in the midst of both of us having many meltdowns we were trying to comfort each other out of the mini meltdown while we're having a meltdown i always say karen may be right about to hit the floor but i'm right there beside her both yep. of us can't hit it at the same time so i'm <laughs> so, hanging on the string and that's vice versa yeah and so but your emotions absolutely cloud your judgment your emotions absolutely have you uh where you're not you're not thinking because you're so busy being emotional yeah and if you can find a way to just calm down and figure out what those emotions will fix yeah then you'll be okay because you realize guess what you, yeah it may make you feel better in the moment or it may make you you know, get something off your chest that you needed to get off your chest, but it's not going to solve your problem. But, you know, men do get emotional. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm putting both of my hands up. Mm -hmm. I tell my boys, it's okay to be emotional. I, it, it's not okay to go out and act a fool. Yeah. But you do have to get those emotions out because if you don't, you communicate the wrong thing to the wrong people. You take it out on people that didn't even deserve that. Yeah, and we, we that that's something I know, especially in our younger years of marriage, you know, when you're, you're immature and you don't have enough life's um, skills. skills to – teach you to calm down and then you emotional all over the place and then that's how you we would get into arguments or bickering or you know i'm not talking to you or just really silly things i mean you know we've never been like really big arguers per se but oh we, we would bicker each other into the ground oh, yeah, you petty, petty. petty and I mean, betty you might <laughs> <laughs> i mean you might as well you know be uh might as well have a big blowout blow up because it's better than you know than the pettiness that we have but i think with those emotions though we learned to we learned today and this is why this is so important for us to have this podcast right now because these emotions are so raw they're real and and they're real because we just live this and i mean please don't think that what has happened has you know had the resolve before we did the podcast no nope. the podcast is almost like we're letting it's therapeutic it's therapeutic and we're also saying it's already all right see we it, it's the it's the whole thing of you gotta you know speaking it before it happens yes. we already know it's okay so we're we're yep. it's like we're it's like we're uh it, it's retroactive we're going we, we got we're going back to the emotion because to us we already living in the present of it being done oh yeah so 
Karen and I, we consider ourselves to be common sense life teachers. Mm -hmm. So what better case study than us? Yeah. Hadn't really had no real situations, but this situation just kind of caught me off guard. Way off guard. And it brought up old feelings and reactions that I thought I had grown from. Mm -hmm. But I really did grow mm -hmm. because I stepped outside of the moment and said, let's let these emotions have their way. So if I want to throw myself across the bed, <laughs> <laughs> run back and forth, call Karen and say, I don't know what to do. I mean, just whatever it is. Yeah. I, I had to let that moment happen mm -hmm. because I had to calm down. And it wasn't even calm down in anger. It was anxiety. Yeah. It was like, what I do? What I do? Do this, do this. And then when you get to that place, you cannot make a logical decision. Yeah. So we always try to take things that we go through mm -hmm. and make them a teachable moment. And even with each other, making them a teachable moment, seeing with each other, okay, you know, you were like, let me go up here for a minute and get it together. Let me, you know, I'll be right back. And in, in the past, I'd have been like, well, what's wrong? Why are you going to stand? We've been in talk about it. <laughs> like, no, yeah. give you your freaking space, yeah. right? And because sometimes, I think what I've learned is I've gotten, you know, as, as we've progressed into 20 plus years of marriage is, is that you have to have, it is necessary to have just a few minutes. You just need that time to just calm down, think about it, relax and get yourself together because and if that means that you need to cry it out if that means you need to scream it out get through that as quickly as possible because once you overcome that emotional shock of it all then you're able to to move forward in figuring out what am i doing because your emotions are not going to allow you to be clear because you got you know when you're crying and you got uh, you know, snot running out your nose and your Lot eyes all on. watery and you Lot got a headache and you know, you just, you just, oh, you feel defeated and it's so much, you're not being productive and you're prolonging, you're prolonging your progress. And you know, you, we call that going to put on your favorite drama suit, <laughs> the good old faithful, the one that you always have a fit in. And you know, the key to this is how do you control your emotions? Mm -hmm. Everybody is different when it comes to the level of emotion they go to, mm -hmm. how it affects them, and how they act out. But there are some core things you can do to control your emotions. Mm -hmm. The first thing you have to do is know that you are emotional. Yep. Most people are in denial. You be like, are you okay? No, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. No, you're not. <laughs> yep. No, you're not. So you have to accept that you are emotional. Mm -hmm. If you are dramatic, Go be dramatic because everybody else know you're going to be dramatic. <laughs> right, 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 right. And if you're not dramatic, some people kind of get introverted and sink sit away. down yeah. and they get in their own space and they have to really process what's going That's on. That's me. Do that. Yeah. I'm the dramatic one. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I, I totally uh, withdraw. Well, I used to. I'm much. Oh, my God. Mingo will tell you. Let me tell you something. A girl that won't cry. Um, This one. I, you. I, if I'm crying, oh, I'm I'm ready to fight. Yeah. If I'm or if I'm crying, I love you enough for you to have hurt my feelings. So I agree with what you're saying with learning how to control your emotions because I didn't have that capacity before. And something somebody never told us: emotions need to be controlled. Mm -hmm. They don't just get to have their way. Now they mm -hmm. they get to have a good time for a little time. Yeah. But then you gotta you gotta reel that thing on in. Right. But you gotta decide. Some people like me myself. If I go through something emotional. Within 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the magnitude of it, I can move past it. Mm -hmm. Some people, it lingers on for days, me. weeks, me. years. Me. <laughs> well, you know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying that that really is how I used to be because for some reason, and this is, this is, this is why it is so beneficial for you to talk to other people because I learned through, you know, reading self-help books and listening to other podcasts. And of course my favorite Oprah Winfrey, um, and, and Yala Vanzant and even Dr. Phil and just all of these people that used to be on her show when she had the Oprah Winfrey, sh Winfrey show. Um, but that I learned, um, uh, about me, something like a self-discovery thing that I learned just from working on myself and knowing myself is that I always thought that there was power in me holding on to my baggage and holding on to my emotions. So what that would mean for us is if you hurt my feelings, I wouldn't just say, Mingo, that hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. 
I would be like, mm, he hurt my feelings. I'm gonna show him. And then if he won't, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah I'm gonna still be the wife. And you know, because I like to be a traditional wife. For those of you who um, have heard me say that before, I absolutely love being a wife, even though I'm totally a tomboy. I and, love her being my wife. Yes. So I love to spoil my husband. I love to cook his dinner. I love to fix his plate. And that's not for everybody. So don't let anybody tell you you have to be anybody other than yourself. But um, I use my hurt feelings and those emotions as leverage. I use it as leverage and some kind of false sense of power um, for as ammunition where if we had an argument, like I said, when we were younger, oh, I'm bringing it all up. Oh, oh, I'm, I got the, the memory of an elephant and I'm going to give it to you. And so that came from a misunderstanding of my own emotions and what the capacity to uh, to express myself yeah. or the lack thereof, what it meant. And even this for us, this is a new thing. What we decided to do is instead of letting our logical mind take over after the emotions had passed, let's say, let's go record it right now. Let's talk through it. So we're talking through this. And so you kind of hear real time. The, us coming down off of the emotion. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's really being captured right now. Yeah. I thought that to be very valuable mm -hmm. because people like to act like things don't affect them mm -hmm. and they really, really do. Yeah. Now some people, you know, they have that attitude. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but it really does matter. Mm -hmm. You just haven't asked the right question yet. Mm -hmm. What I've learned about emotions, emotions to me are abstract. Mm. They're kind of organic. Like there's no, there's no description of emotion to me. Mm -hmm. Each person has the right to have their own emotional highlight or low point. Mm -hmm. So when you filter through what emotions are, you don't want to run in like the savior and give somebody some bad advice. Mm -hmm. You might want to listen first, mm -hmm. let them go through their emotional stage. Once they wind down and get to that logical point, that's when you can start talking about what needs to be done. But trying to talk about what needs to be done when I came really, I hadn't even accepted that the fact that something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I'm still filtering through that process. And I know that I talk with so many people. Karen speaks with so many people. We speak with so many different couples. And most of the time we're talking to them, they are in that emotional stage. Yeah. They're not in that logical state. So we become good listeners. Well, and then I think two, two things happen. Either one person is trying to suppress the other person's emotions. Mm hmm um, or one person is just completely disregarding the other person's emotions. Mm. So when you're suppressing it, it's, well, I don't know why you feel that way because I didn't do that. Or, man, get out of here. You know, that's that's not even real. You know, or I didn't do that. And, and not because sometimes what we think we're doing to someone or how we're behaving when we're in a situation may not have been received as far as the other person is concerned, the way that you give it is not, maybe is not the way that it was received. And so you do have a lot of times where, um, you know, couples or, or people shoot just in life. I'm talking about just in life, in any relationship, we have the ability to sometimes dismiss someone. If we feel like they're overly emotional, instead of maybe going on a, a discovery of, well, what happened either, and, and sometimes it's not always about what someone did to you. Yeah. It's about how you process what was done. And sometimes that is about you and not the other person. And maybe you've got to figure out how to um, accept, adapt to, um, and uh, modify yeah. how you deal with things emotionally. Yeah. And I wish I would have learned this as a young person mm -hmm. because – this this description of what we give and this information we give it it has no age limit on it I, absolutely i mean this can work with anybody mm -hmm. this could work with our granddaughter yeah learning how to deal with your emotions then coming to express yourself logically the best way you know how and nope. you know how you know I can work on her real quick, and you can go and say what you gotta say. Oh yeah. When she uh when, when she came for the summer, and you know she would just kind of have these little outbursts, and she would have her little mini meltdowns, and um and I would have her breathe with me. Oh yeah. And she would I would be like, okay, come on. Yeah, yeah. And so she would take her hand and she would just, you know, she would breathe with me. So then, you know, once she learned how to control her emotions, it's so funny because whenever she would get upset, she would actually exercise that yeah. to calm down 
so that she can let me know what, what she want to let want. her dad know and let you know, you know, or, or whatever. So I just want to say that when Mingo was saying it can work with any age, any person at any age, it is true. So the whole goal to this was that we wanted to try. We allowed ourselves to be the case study on the fly. Mm-hmm. So we talked through this thing. I went through my emotional piece. Karen went through her mini emotional piece. Then we really got into the logic of it. And we said, you know what? Let's 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 go talk about this. Let's let's record what mm-hmm. we're talking about because this may even be helpful to us to go back and listen mm-hmm. to because that's the power in it. It's not about us saying it. It's about the information that we don't know. Mm-hmm. It's never what you don't know. It's always a way for you to get that information. Mm-hmm. But where the problem comes in is that when some people find out information, they don't like to share mm-hmm. without a cost. Yeah. See, we're different than that. Yeah. I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. If I know, I'll tell you because I, I will not create a competition. Absolutely. I want you to get it. I want If you have an emotional moment, I want you to understand that if you're at work, you need to go outside and get in your car mm-hmm. or walk wherever, you know, your little break area. If you're a college student, I need you after that class to be able to go to that that chill spot on the campus. If you're a teenager, same thing in high school, mm-hmm. same thing at home. You just have to be respectful of you have to go through your mm-hmm. emotions and your process. And that's very key to us. That's very big to us because we feel like the more information we give out, the world is becoming a better place Yeah, because we didn't have this because mm-hmm. we didn't have this to do. So now we're, we're older and we're doing it Yeah, and it works. It really, really works. I mean, I'm not telling you something we have not practiced. We practice this real time in right this now. moment and it, I'm feeling so much better Me too, because I'm feeling like, first of all, it wasn't as big of a situation as I thought it was. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, it was, it was the biggest huge. situation in the world. Yes. That's because my emotions were on 100. <laughs> yeah. They were on 100. Mm-hmm. So I had to realize that, okay, your drama level is really high right now. You need to be, you need to man up. You need to go have your fit. It doesn't make you a man to hold your emotions in. Mm-hmm. If, if a fit is a part of your process, then a fit is a part of your process. Right. But you have to be mindful of who's watching, where you do it at. I was in the comfort of my own home in my own space. Mm-hmm. I didn't even have the fit in front of my wife. Whereas when I was young, I was like, why well, they got to happen? But it well, didn't. You can't tra- say it like that, man. But yeah, you know, I, I'm just being dramatic right now. Oh, I, okay. That's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I make it more animated. You know what I'm saying? But it's really what happened. You know what I'm saying? But. I'm just, I'm just being, we, we bring laughter into our relationship because that's the foundation of our relationship is laughter. Yeah. So, but because we understood you have to go through the emotional piece mm-hmm. so you can get to the logic yeah. where you can get to the laughter. Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. So, and that's how I feel about it because at the end of the day, we're in this together. Mm-hmm. So, and so when you feel yourself getting emotional. I think a key to it also is identifying what that emotion is. Is it anger? Yeah. Is it sadness? Yeah. Is it, because, uh, you know, we can fall real, real good and deep into a pity party. You can have a whole one man, one woman show all by yourself where you fall into this, oh, my God, I just can't believe it. It just feels like the world is, you know, uh, you know, the, the world is on my shoulders and I can't I can't hold up anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's not that your emotions aren't real. It's not that your emotions shouldn't be acknowledged. It's not that you shouldn't even go through your emotional thing or whatever it is that you're having in that moment. The thing is, you don't stay in it. Yeah, that's it. I am guilty I am so guilty in the past of staying in my emotions. And it, it, I, if I had known, I mean, when I look back on it, I'm like, oh my gosh, do you know how much valuable time I wasted? Do you know how, une- how emotionally unhealthy I was? Because I didn't know how to identify. I didn't like the feeling of sadness. I didn't like the feeling of being, um, you know, feeling like I couldn't, you know, fix it or like I, I wouldn't, you know, man, you know, I can do this and I don't have to be all emotional and I don't have to show this and show that, you know, in, in, in almost like a, a, a callousness on me. Oh, good. To. Good, uh, you can identify that. Yeah, to, uh, to not want to. Shut the world show out. Show what was really on the inside. Because yeah. on the inside. Your girl straight, you talking about you being dramatic on the outside. Oh, I was having a a tornado of emotions (laughs) on the inside. And so I didn't know how to be 
softer. I didn't know how to be vulnerable. I didn't know how to share what I felt because I didn't want you to and it's so stupid because you would never make me feel this way yeah but i would think well i don't want him to like laugh at me or make me feel bad or you know shut me down and think i'm weak you know what i mean and that wasn't even something that you uh gave off or or ever told me but that's the prime example of the emotions running the show absolutely the emotions were running the show because they get you thinking stuff it gets you thinking a person act the way that they don't even act. You start accusing people of stuff. <laughs> you, why you say, I, I haven't said anything. Yeah. You, you, oh, why you say it that way? You ask a question, you asked the question and answered it. Yeah. That, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. I haven't said anything. Well, your face looked like, no, now you're trying to bring me into your conversation <laughs> right. with yourself. Absolutely. That's the way it plays out. And it's projection. Yeah. It, that's what it is. Yep. It's projection. Mm-hmm. So what I, what we would like to accomplish is how to explain how to find the balance in both. Yeah. So, you have to respect both. Mm. You have to respect emotions yep. and you have to respect logic. Mm-hmm. Both of them are very important because if they were not important, you would not know how to use them yep. or act out in that way. Mm-hmm. But you have to keep in mind, you can't do everything in front of everybody. Yeah. Because sometimes if you're in an emotional stage and you're around, as Karen said, kind of a callous person mm-hmm. and they firing their arrows at you while you going through your emotion your emotion then will turn to anger yeah it'll course, get that incredible hook mode because yep. it's like oh i'm getting ready to protect myself that because me. because i'm having an emotion this person is coming off to me it's making me feel like i'm weak mm-hmm. because i'm having this emotion this is not finna go down so i'm finna flare up and show my cobra head mm-hmm. or my big flamingo uh feathers mm-hmm. that, that's what i'm getting ready to do mm-hmm. Peacock feathers. Pe- I'm sorry, peacock feathers. Yeah, that's I'm okay. Sorry. I had but it. then, but then, like when you think about, I said flamingo because my name is Mingo. Mingo. <laughs> no, but see, like I said, there we go laughing again. Yeah. But then, when it comes to logic, sometimes logic will make a person feel like you don't care. Yeah. Because, yeah, I can see because that because logic tends to kind of be even. It kind of comes from straightforward. You, you should do this. You should one, two, three, it can four. Be brutal. And yeah. emotion is like they 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 count in a different language. Yeah. Because it's it's just all over the place. Like I said, it's very abstract. Mm-hmm. But then logic is more like math. But you it's know, like a formula. You know something that I learned from you and you used to tell me this all the time before I learned how to and I'm and I still it's something I still have to work on on a regular basis to control my emotions. But you used to always tell me as it pertained to certain areas in my life that you know you would say babe you don't have to get on the roller coaster with that person oh you ain't got i used to say you do not have to buy tickets to their amusement park you, today i mean you don't have to get on you don't have to be on whatever ups and downs they have that has nothing to do with you like stay in your own lane live your own life don't let their emotions affect how you behave and how you act and how you are because it has nothing to do with you and then he would also tell me like you know, he would say, Karen, well, what happened? so say I'm having an, another emotional time. And he would say, Karen, what happened before that person called you? What happened to them? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, exactly. You, you didn't, didn't do, do it. it. You couldn't have done it. You just got on the phone with him. Yeah. But that's because you were in a logical state, but then they made you emotional. Absolutely. Because they, they you answered the call and they threw their emotions on you mm-hmm. because nobody ever told them about emotions and logic. Yeah. Because had somebody... Did, you know, had somebody explained that to them, then maybe they would have said, hey, Karen, I just need you to listen. Mm-hmm. They would have started off the conversation. Hey, girl, I need you to listen. And this is what just happened. Yep. Versus them firing off at you mm-hmm. because somebody got them all worked up. Yeah. It is okay. I, we tell our kids all the time, no one can force you to answer a question when they want to answer. Yep. They, they just can't. You are in control of that as an individual. Mm-hmm. So that means that if you don't know the answer to something, the best thing to say is, I, I don't, don't know. know. Or you can say, I'm not prepared to answer that right now. Let me think about mm-hmm. it. Anybody who pushes you beyond that point or beyond the, 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 the barrier or, you know, the respectful space you ask for, it may not end out right because mm-hmm. y'all are operating in a, in a place of emotion. Mm-hmm. Operating in a place of emotion doesn't work with friendships. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work with marriages. It doesn't work as siblings. It doesn't work at coworkers, yep. friends, strangers. 
places of emotion do not work Mm -hmm. because there has to be a logical person in the conversation. Yeah, and there has to be that balance. And I think that even if you are in a space where, say you're riding in the car, something makes you emotional and you don't necessarily have anyone to bounce it off of at that time. Yeah. Get your emotions out Mm -hmm. and then calm it on down. Oh, yeah. Calm down and then begin to think of how that emotion can actually fuel the way that you think about it. So if it made you sad, how can you get unsad? True. If it made you angry, how can you remedy that angry? Yeah. Or that angry emotion? Um, If it made you both, what is the opposite of that emotion? What opposite feeling can you then begin to go towards, search towards, think towards in order to balance that out because that's not going to solve anything. I've heard people say, you know, when I get upset about something, I think about one of my favorite places to be. Mm -hmm. Like for us, we love the beach. Mm -hmm. So when you're upset, you go to the beach. I I had a strange gift given to me at a job I had in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, they gave me the pins, you know, they gave me the whole nine to set my office up. Everything was really nice. Mm -hmm. But within my packet of stuff, it was a box of 64 crayons with the sharpener mm-hmm. on it. So I immediately went to the HR person and said, hey, did y'all put this in here by accident? She said, no, this is for you to have. I'm like, well, where's my coloring book? <laughs> and so, But it wasn't a coloring book. So I said, so did y'all, I said, my kids are older. My kids were in high school at this time mm-hmm. and one was in college. And I'm like, I really don't have nothing to do with crayons. She said, yes, you do. I said, so explain to me. She said, those days when this job gets to be a little bit too much, because a lot of days it's going to get to be too much, Mm -hmm. you pull out that box of crayons and you smell it. Mm -hmm. And it reminds you of your childhood Mm -hmm. and it will calm you down. Mm. I almost sniffed the color out of that box (laughs) because it really worked as a stress reliever. (sighs) And to this day, I still sniff crayons. Yeah. Well, not like that. Not not like that. I'm just saying, like, I smell the crayons and it's like, Oh, okay, wow, I feel better. But now I have a granddaughter, so she takes the grants. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and I think that um I think that a very good way to get that balance also is just like we tell Skylar just to breathe, to calm down, to go through what you're gonna go through with your emotions. But you got to stop crying or being angry or whatever your emotion is long enough to figure out how you can make yourself feel better. And if it takes you more than a day, okay. But the, uh, the goal is for you not to stay in that place. The goal is for you to say, okay, Logic, uh, I need you to kick in emotions. We tired now. I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of being mad. I'm tired of being whatever you're going to be. And I am ready now to move forward in what it is that I need to do in order to get whatever it is resolved. And you can do that. And you can do that. You can have a balance between your emotions and your logic. Absolutely. So y'all know always end off with an encouraging word. I encourage you to get yourself healthy emotionally and live the best life that you're supposed to live don't let life live you absolutely and when things come up take a minute slow down get your emotions out and go and find your logic happy relationship building happy relationship building thank you for listening to our podcast you can find us on facebook on our love is powerful stuff page and at mingo and karen on twitter and instagram happy relationship building